Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1985 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. On the mound for the Tigers today is Brian Kelly, whose record is 2-3 with a 4.38 ERA. And pitching for the Yankees is Roger Slegel, whose record is 4-4 with a 4.72 ERA. Okay, we lost uh, the first game of the month of June yesterday, 8-7 to seven to the Yankees, but that was somewhat rendered inconsequential with our big trade that we did. Uh, after the game yesterday, Houston made us an offer that I just could not talk myself out of. I, I, if you watch the video, it was a long video, but I probably spent 20 minutes hemming and hawing over whether or not the deal was the right thing to do. And if you missed that, um, I will review it here with you really quick. So we received Damon Berryhill from Houston, uh, the number one player in the whole game right now. I know it's Damon Berryhill. He wasn't even in the majors until 1987. That's his, his 88 card, or maybe that's his 89 card. I forget which one right now. Um, so Damon Berryhill's 21 years old. And he's got a 4.1 war, and he's killing it. He's basically the MVP of the National League uh, right now, based on statistics anyway. He's great defensively. Um, looks like you can see he's put up some good offensive stats. And, uh, you know, like I'd be mean, kind of a gem for us to be able to get at this point. And this was offered to me. I didn't even go out there searching this. Additionally, we got Danny Heap, who we tossed in AAA. Uh, all we had to give up was Jeff Stone, who I like uh, a lot, but and he's you know he's 24 years old. I don't know what he is or who he is yet, because he's only has 180 at bats. For all I know, he could turn into Lou Whitaker or George Brett here in a year or two and just stop producing. So uh, the other thing I noticed about Jeff Stone that uh, after the video had uploaded and I was reviewing everything. He's got a 58 health. I mean, this guy is on death's door. He's like one slip away from breaking a hip. So, I mean, this guy is probably not, uh, I, I don't feel bad about giving up Jeff Stone, although he was really uh, a bright spot on our team, batting 331. Okay, and then we uh, gave up yesterday's starter Mark Leiter, who we had a, a deep dive on him prior to the game starting, and uh, I illustrated, you know, his very mediocre career in which he led a lot of uh, categories, a lot of negative categories like runs scored, home runs given up, and hits by pitch. So, you know, I don't, I, I like Mark Leiter in theory, but I have no problem getting rid of him. And then we also got rid of uh, Craig Wilson, who was mired in double-A. And we've got Matt Williams, the actual Matt Williams, third baseman, in single-A. So he's going to, Matt Williams is going to be our third baseman of the future. So Craig Wilson is, you know, not important to us. And then we threw in some money. They, they required it, and we had it, and it was no big deal. So that's our roster. Uh, that was the trade, and here's our roster for today. Now we've got it. Um, set up here. So David Berryhill will be our cleanup hitter. He's a switch hitter. He can bat versus lefties and righties. We're going to make uh, TK our DH, our everyday DH. And we're going to keep Marty Party on the roster um, as a, a backup catcher who's got a good arm too. So, so both of our catchers have solid arms. Kennedy really doesn't, although he, for the most part, throws out base runners at a 34% clip. So um, you see that Larkin and Gibby are listed as tired, but we do have tomorrow off. So after today's game, we'll advance it a day. Um, they'll just have to play a little bit tired. Um, and then after the day off, they'll be rested and we'll start uh, what looks like a 15-game uh, stretch here um, where we won't get a day off. So that's where we stand. Uh, we did some different uh, things with the bullpen as well. And we'll, we'll take a look at those when we get to the game. So let's go ahead and get today's game started 
As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. We're not done. We really do need to make a trade for a starting pitcher. As you can see, Brian Kelly gets the start today. We need something good from him. Um, Dave Rosema and then Schatzader were moved into the rotation. Danny Jackson becomes a left-handed reliever. Carl Willis got called up um, to the majors so uh, to take the place of uh, Mark Leiter. And that's how we look there. We're going to face Roger Slagle, uh, who's a right-hander. So we have our lineup in there versus righties. Everyone's going to be batting lefty, except for Barry Larkin. Let's go ahead and do the official Tigers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing shortstop, is Barry Larkin. Batting second. At second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting third in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting cleanup and catching is Damon Berryhill. Batting fifth in DHing is Terry Kennedy. Batting sixth in right field is Jim Eisenreich. Batting seventh and playing third base is Mike Pagliarulo. Batting eighth, playing first base is George Brett. And batting ninth in center field is Willie Wilson. Okay, we'll take a look here at Roger Slagle. Another one of those pitchers who uh, came into prominence out of nowhere in the 1980 season, the first sim year that we've done. The guy's won 80 ball games. Pretty incredible. Uh, this is his first off season in which he's making his 13th start, 4-4 four four with a 4.72 ERA, 37 strikeouts and only 82 innings pitched. Opponents are betting 284. Uh, fastball topping out 91 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 47.2%. Slide our uh, sidearm curve is an 85 and a changeup in 83. Overall rated in 85. He's 31 years old, and the right hander is a free agent after next year. Look at his log. This is our first time facing him this year, it looks like. And he's coming off a no decision versus Toronto, where he went seven innings, gave up four runs on six hits, and walked through. Okay, let's take a look at the defense for the Yankees. This is the same lineup as the first two games of the series. So you know the deal. Tartable, bad arm, uh, and bad defensively. First base, Dennis Wirth, and also Bobby Beecham at short, below league average. Uh, behind home plate is Ron Hassey, rated an 80. Okay, I'm curious to see how the newfangled offense will do. Let's get it started with Barry Larkin leading it off, batting 305 with two home runs. He pops it up on the infield, and Meacham will make the catch. One out. Next man up is Whitaker. He's come a long way, batting 241 now with five home runs. One mysterious home run. He takes ball four, and Whitaker's on first for Gibby. I mean, I kind of feel like hitting and running should be the thing to do here, but because of the walk, um, I'm afraid of the strikeout that's about to happen and then Whitaker getting thrown out in the base path. So we're just going to take our lumps. That's a 1-0 count. Oh, that was a good call! <laughs> As Gibby hits an apple taco over the left field fence for a two-run home run. His 12th home run. It must be nice for Gibby to have someone uh, to protect him. Like Damon Berryhill. Here's Berryhill's first at bat as a Tiger. First pitch swinging. And a base hit to left field. So Berryhill continues to hit. Makes a good first impression. Runner on first. Now we will hit and run. And really, I probably should not have catchers going back to back. That's a double play every single time. But we'll hit and run, get him going. And Kennedy pulls it to right field for a single. Barry Hill goes to third, and we will hit and run again. Again, potential double play, so we want to get the base runners going. Jim Eisenreich, batting 249, eight home runs. There's a ground ball that gets through the shortstop, Meacham, for a single. Barry Hill scores, Kennedy advances to second, and it's 3 nothing Detroit. I think we're all feeling pretty good right now about... Uh, this new offense. 
My peg Ligarulo, we're going to let him swing away. 1-1 one, one count. And a line drive, ground ball, I don't know. Line out to the second baseman, Randolph. And George Brett. We expect nothing from George anymore. Oh, a ground ball base hit. Kennedy will not score on that. He would be going with two outs. Oh, he does score. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I'm surprised the game would, does not normally let that happen. But he should be going on a ground ball at the middle. 4 nothing, Detroit. Give Brett an RBI. And our number nine hitter, Willie Wilson. Batting through the order once. And a ground ball to first. And that will do it. Tigers making an impression. 4 nothing. Let's take a look at the Yankees lineup. Batting leadoff in center field is Otis Nixon. Batting second at second base is Willie Randolph. Batting third at third base is Fritzy Connolly. Batting cleanup in right field is Danny Tartable. Batting fifth and DH is Nelson Simmons. Batting sixth in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting seventh at first base is Dennis Wirth. Batting eighth and catching is Ron Hassey. And batting ninth is the shortstop, Bob Meacham. Okay, Brian Kelly staked to a four-run lead. We'll take a look at his numbers. This is his 12th start. He's 2-3 with a 4.38 ERA. 43 strikeouts in 61 and two-thirds innings. Opponents are betting 254 against him. His fastball tops out and at, tops out at 92 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 47.8%. He's got a splitter rated an 86 and a two-seamer rated an 81. Overall rated an 86. The 26-year-old right-hander is arbitration eligible at the end of the year. He's going to be looking for some money, but he's going to have to pitch a lot better than he is right now. Uh, he's coming off a no decision versus the Indians. He went seven innings, giving up two runs on seven hits. He struck out six. Uh, a very good performance. Unfortunately, did not come away with anything to show for it. He faced the Yankees twice, and both were no decisions. Okay. Let's look at the Tigers' defense. Here it is. Still very good everywhere in the uh, field, including behind the plate now with Damon Barry Hill. Uh, his arm um, is... An 88. Almost elite. Okay, here we go. Otis Nixon leading it off. Let's see if we can maintain a four-run lead. That's a ground ball, the 2-2 count. Larkin making the play. Larkin had a big error yesterday. That's when everything fell apart. Willie Randolph with a ground ball to first. George Brett making the play. And Fritzy Connolly having a good series against the Tigers. Rounds out to third. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Shut down inning. After you put a four spot on the board. Barry Larkin leading off again. Let off in the first, leading off in the second. And a base hit the left field. Slagle, we got him on the ropes. Runner on first. We're not going to hit and run. We're going to let Whitaker swing away since he has been hot. He did walk the first time up. And that's a comebacker to Swagle. Only play was to go to first. So Larkin is in scoring position for Gibby. Gibby hit his second career home run off of Slagle. And the first got the scoring started. And he loops it in the left. Get down. That's going to carry it will be caught for out number two. And Damon Berryhill, a chance here to pad the score. Get down. It's going to be caught on a line for out number three. We leave a runner stranded. We go to the bottom of the second. And Danny Tarnable will lead it off. Also, I want to mention that Jeff Stone going to Houston. Uh, they have Paul O'Neill to play left field. 
So I don't know what they're going to do when Paul O'Neill comes back from his injury. Um, I mean, Jeff Stone might just go to the minor leagues. That would just be a waste of a trade as Kelly walks Tartable to start the second inning. It's not really my problem now, but I just hate the way the game does that. 4-2 if Nelson Simmons hits a home run. His fourth of the season, so we're going to give it all right back. Yeah, there's nothing we can do to stop it, so we just let it happen. A hustle double for Kemp. One out is worth pops up. Here's Ron Hassey, former MVP, ground ball to third. That'll hold Kemp. And the number nine hitter, Bobby Meacham, betting 400 since he took over for Ozzy. And a fly ball to left. So we cut the score in half. It's 42. Here's TK. We, got, we can't let him off the hook. We really did have Slagle on the ropes. And if you look at it, he has only pitched 35 pitches, so we're not being patient. As uh, Kennedy was first pitch swinging. Eisenreich strikes out. Yeah, this is bad. Oh, no, this is good! <laughs> Mike Peggy Arulo solo shot, fourth home run. I was going to say before that home run that we got all the runs we're going to get in the first, and the game will be shut out the rest of the way, but we did get one of the run back. George Brett, no chance of ever hitting another home run. We go to the bottom of the third. It's 5-2. to two. Back to the top of the lineup with Otis Nixon. And we walked him. That's terrible. Give him second. Give him third. Not going as Randolph pops it up. Is Nixon afraid of Berryhill? 3-1. And we're going. All right. I mean, this is already total bullshit. The guy went... The only reason he's got three walks right now is because he didn't walk anybody in his last start. He struck out six. So this is the game evening things up. And it's just so stupid. Like, why can't an individual performance um, have its own merit? I, I don't understand. Round ball to short. Can't turn a double play. Completely incapable of doing that anymore. And Nelson Simmons with a three-run home run. Ground ball to Larkin. Error. We get out of it. Go to the top of the fourth, and Willie Wilson will lead it off. The other thing about the walks, which I'll never understand, is would he have walked three if we weren't already up by three runs? Like, if it was an even score, would he have walked three? I don't know. Wilson pops up. Larkin flies out. And Lou gets another base hit. He singled, walked, and he advances on an error by the left fielder, Steve Kemp. I think Wicker <laughs> has exposed Kemp as uh, it's likely that the ball hit off Kemp's head and went over the fence. Uh, so Whitaker's just uh, showing that he does not have good fielding skills out there. And another. Okay. God, I hate this game. It is so stupid. So now the catcher drops the ball somehow in fair territory. And David Berryhill will have a chance to knock in some unearned runs. Let's do it. DB! Ground ball to first. Yeah, that's it. All right, we're going to strand those runners. Uh, all I'm doing is holding my breath to the fifth inning. I, have, I do not think Kelly's going to make it. Here's Kemp. They're just keeping Larkin busy at shortstop. That's four in a row to short. And then he hits Dennis Worth with a 1-2 count. So this will be a two-run home run. 
No, ground ball into the hole. And a double play, thanks to the catcher running. We'll take it. He's only thrown a two-hitter, and yet I want to take him out right now. And he's only given up the home run, essentially. Kennedy, a double, a leadoff double. 12 doubles on the year. I think that ties him with Willie Wilson for the team lead. Let's see if Eisenreich can't pull it to the right side. Get Kennedy over, nope. So now it doesn't matter. Also, we're going to the fifth inning and Kelly has not struck out a single batter. Great job, game. Also, two ground balls to third and an error. It's so stupid. It's the worst program game available to anyone. Honored run, we'll take it. First and second, two outs. And Larkin will drive in another run. Brett scores. 7-2, to two, and that's going to do it. They're taking out Slagle, bringing in Scott Nielsen. He's bad. Uh, and I don't understand why. Doesn't have much of a fastball, ground ball, 42%. The fastball is rated in 88. Overall rated in 84. 26-year-old righty. Arbitration eligible after the 87 season. He is their long reliever. Whitaker. So far having a good game. And he'll ground out to second. That'll do it. So we get two runs in the inning. I think they were both unearned. We go to the bottom of the fifth. All right. Can we get Kelly through this inning? Bobby Meacham 0 for 1. Jammed inside. So Kelly's going to throw through, got, got zero walks and six strikeouts, could not get a decision. And he's going to win this game without striking out anyone. Oh, there we go. I mean, talk about being due. Strikes out Otis Nixon. And Willie Randolph strikes out. Well, we are through five. We will uh, now baby Kelly the rest of the way. Kirk Gibson pulls a rocket to first. Worth will make the play. One out. Barry Hill, a ground ball to second. And TK, who doubled last time up, grounds up to second base. Fantastic. Yankees have more errors than hits right now. All right. Kelly's at 78 pitches. He's got two righties and a switch hitter. So no matter what, Kelly's going to face these two batters. And then we'll see what happens because Simmons has already gone deep on him today. Fritzy. Third strikeout in a row. Yeah, we got that one-to-one -one ratio the game loves so much. Something b bad is about to happen. A ground ball to first. Ooh, I thought that was going to be an error. Okay, so now Kelly has earned the right to close out the sixth. Nelly. Yeah, Nelly owns him. Ah, screw it. Out he comes. Brian Kelly, we're going to bring in the creeper. Creeping on in from the pen. You see his numbers are not good compared to his previous years. But we do try to use him in some situations to pitch a whole inning. And if we just used him as a loogie, that would be great. But he's also not been effective versus lefties. This lefty on lefty should be advantage Gibson with a 176 batting average. But then he walks him. That's what happens every single time. So Gibson will come out. We'll bring in Carl Willis. Hey, Carl. 
Uh, bad last year. Did not make the team out of spring training. And uh, here's how he, I mean, look. He's got an 83-rated splitter. He's a high ground ball pitcher. And he's overall rated an 81. And he walks him. I mean, the game is over. We just lost the game. Does not matter now. Yeah. I mean, this they're going to score. They're going to score big. And there's nothing we're going to be able to do to stop it. That's what sucks about Baseball Mogul. I am grateful to get out of that jam. Yeah, and I mean, now Scott Nielsen's got to lower that 10 ERA up against us and there's nothing we can do to prevent that either let's see if willis can give us one more no he will not let's see how many he gives up he's gonna give up a lot here one up round ball to second you think luke could start it and a double play to get out of it. Things are going our way. Except for at the plate. We have not had a hit since the fifth inning. And we get a hit. Barry Larkin. I guess we pull up the in-game stats. Larkin three for five today. Lou popping up. Everybody in the lineup has a hit for the Tigers. Bottom of the eighth inning. Good job by Willis. That'll bring us to Todd Fishlips. He had his worst outing last time out. Took the loss. <clears throat> Danny Tartable leading it off. 0-1 count. They're gonna get they're gonna get at least one more run, guaranteed. Nelson Simmons swinging for the fences too. Steve Kemp. Down ball to short. Error. Huh? And Dennis Worth. A double, maybe a triple. Pretty deep. Ron Hassey will drive in the run. All right, they get a run on the home run. We'll go to the top of the ninth inning. Scott Nielsen is going to finish this game off. He's the MVP for the Yankees today. Until they come back and win anyway. Barry Hill finishes the game. One for five. TK gets his third hit. Jimmy Eisenreich. A double play to end it. Oh, that's fine. Pags has got a home run, ground ball to first. Okay, not a save situation, but I mean, let's not screw around here. Bring Dave Smith in. 19 saves, four blueies. Spot, wait, is he at 82 now? Oh my gosh. I, we have overused him. This is game 33 and game 55. I mean, he should be in the game. I probably should not put him in there. Oh, God. Yep. This is where they're going to get a bunch. Is this going to be a blown save? That is the question. An infield single. Willie Randolph. That'll get one in. Nope. Fritzy. A comebacker. There you go, time. Oh, no. Oh, three run home run. No line drive to center field. Could that be the game ender? It is. We will take it. It was iffy every inning. Tigers break the losing streak 7 to 3. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy stakes. Play one more day in advance. Any more trade offers? Thinking about it, lots of simulating, and there is a trade offer from the Cubs. 
Jesus Alfaro, we don't care, and Jim Beswick, who at one point was leading the National League in home runs in 83 before he got injured. He's a right fielder, left fielder, first base guy. He's only 26 years old. Um, he's got power. He's got average speed. Hmm. He's going to arbitration, though. What about Rusty? What's his story? Yeah, Rusty's not arbitration eligible until 87. So, I mean, we would sign... Or we would do the, if we did this trade, which we're not going to. Um, if we did this trade, then we'd have to make a decision on Beswick, and uh, we got a younger player with an equal rating um, who's got two more years. So that's a no. Okay. I like it when they make trade offers. It gives me something to think about. Well, there's the National League for you. Uh, everything's the same. In the American League, we win, so does Boston. So we're four back. New York loses, of course. Uh, Cleveland lost. Look at the West. Chicago's got two games up on Seattle. That's going to go all, go the distance for sure. California making a little bit of a run. Somehow Oakland is still in it, six games back. Let's take, take a look at headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Week. Chicago expands the lead with a 9-4 win. Tigers beat the Yankees to move within three and a half. Okay. Math is not important when you program a game. Ed Holicki is going to miss 13 games. <laughs> he is still holding on. Two and two, uh, made two starts, 0 and 1 with a 1350 ERA. Um, I actually, I'm kind of curious what that Angels lineup looks like. Um, rotation, let's take a look real quick. That's pretty bad. Oh, no, they you know what they did? They gave Kurt McCaskill that number five spot from the uh, long relief position. That's a huge upgrade. I mean, why is he not in the lineup anyway? Not the lineup, but the rotation. Uh, his endurance isn't a typical starter's endurance. He has made one start last year. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. We'll play uh, the first game back at home versus the Brew Crew. They took our lunch money and made us eat dirt last time we faced them. Now, uh, Gibby hit his 12th home run, a significant home run, which never happens from Gibby. And Pags had his fourth home run. Uh, TK got his 12th hit. Damon Berryhill, in his debut, had a hit um, and scored. And also, Otis Nixon, who got on the base pass on the base path three times, did not even try to steal. Uh, Brian Kelly gets the win in a terrible performance, really. Uh, he's now 3-3. Three and three, And the bullpen, other than Todd Fisher, do their gerbs. I'm still completely uh, scarred by recent events, so I have no idea what to trust in them. And Roger Slagle takes a loss. He's 4-5. and five. Okay, folks. That'll do it. We're going to come back tomorrow and play that game versus the Brew Crew. Until then, everyone, have a great day.